Warning. Bromine is toxic and extremely volatile. This experiment must be performed outside or in a fume hood. Bromine is one of the halogen group with an atomic number of 35. What is interesting is that it is one of the only two elements that are liquid at room temperature, with another one being mercury. Bromine has a deep reddish brown appearance. For the same volume, it is about three times heavier than water. Despite being so dense, the viscosity of bromine is however very similar to water. Elemental bromine is tremendously useful in organic chemistry. It can be utilized to synthesize organic halides, which opens a path to make many other organic compounds. To start things off, 400 ml of distilled water is poured into a beaker. Then I drop in a stair bar and turn the stirring. Then 100 grams of sodium bromide is gradually added into the water. Doing it this way reduces the likelihood of trapping the stair bar. After everything is dissolved, I then turn off the stirring and distribute the solution into two smaller beakers. This is a saw bridge, an ingenious device that makes this whole reaction sustainable. I will explain the details in later steps. The saw bridge is placed in between the two beakers. In a way, the two ends of the saw bridge is submerged by the solution. And make sure to remove the air bubble trapped within, as air is not a good conductor to electricity. Now to get two graphite electrodes, which can be easily obtained by disassembling a zinc carbon battery, as I shown in one of my early videos. But to be aware they are coated with some sticky organic material, to remove that, I simply put it on a lamp and let the heat do its job. Place the two electrodes to each beaker and hook them up to a DC power supply. In this particular electrolysis, the way that electrodes are connected does not matter as much. The only difference it makes is that in which beaker that the bromine will be produced. As soon as I turn on the power, Immediately, we can see the brownish bromine is produced at the anode. It's important to keep the current relatively low as the graphite electrodes will disintegrate over time, the rate of which increases exponentially when the current goes up. Alternatively, a platinum electrode can be used, which allows a much higher current to be passed through, thus fastening the reaction. However, it doesn't count cheap, unless you do lots of electrolysis. In that case, the platinum one will be more economic in the long run. Okay, let me explain what is happening here. At this anode, the bromine ions are oxidized to elemental bromine. At this cathode, the hydrogen atoms in the water molecule are reduced to form hydrogen gas, along with hydroxyl ions. So in overall, for every two more of sodium bromide, we get one more of bromine. However, this will be very problematic if the reaction is done in a single cell. As the bromine will react with sodium hydroxide to form back to sodium bromide, sodium bromate, and water. This bar is a good way to make sodium bromate. In our case, it is totally undesired. However, by using a divided cell, we can manipulate the location where each product is formed and keep them separate. The saw bridge here acts as a filter. It allows the electron to flow freely, but blocks the bromine making it to another side, thus making the whole reaction sustainable. Here we go three days later. I could have let it run for a little longer, but I was running a tire schedule and I need my fume hood for other projects. So I call it a day. It will have a negative impact on the yield, but oh well. Hmm. Looks like the saw bridge is somewhat damaged by the bromine and adds lots of impurity to the product. That will be removed on later purification. But most importantly, we can see the deep reddish brown liquid sitting nicely on the bottom of the beaker. Then I transferred everything from the bromine beaker to a 250ml of urban wire flask. It filmed tremendously as I was pouring it. This is why it must be done in a fume hood or in a well-ventilated area. Then I set up for a fractional distillation. This will serve to remove any water, fragments from the electrodes and the saw bridge, as well as unreacted sodium bromide. It is important to turn up the heat slowly, 
so no water is making itself through the condenser. When no more of the bombing vapor is coming out of the distillation flask, I turn off the heat and let it cool. Here is the final product, about 20 ml of elemental bromine. This represents about 81% of the yield according to sodium bromide. Bromine is extremely volatile. It will leak through nearly all type of containers, including the one you see here. The only way to store bromine for an extensive period of time is to impure it. Avoid the use of plastic pipettes when it comes to transfer bromine as it is very corrosive to a lot of polymers. Then I used the propane torch to seal the opening. A while ago I set up a Patreon account, but I never got a chance to introduce it. Running a lab is not cheap for me as a student. I really appreciate any of your support. Every Patreon of mine gets to see my video 24 hours in advance before I post on YouTube. And anyone who donates $3 or more will have their name listed as you see here. With your support, I can do so much better. And I truly appreciate for your generosity.